Welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning-Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who's helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so excited that you are here for this time of worship and celebration. It is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and we're celebrating graduates today. So we're just particularly pleased that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship today. And if it's your first time, awesome. We want to make sure that you feel welcomed and that you will please fill out our contact form. We want everybody to do that anyway. But our contact form, the link to that is in the comment section and there's a QR code on the screen. Uh, you just put some information in there so we'll be able to get in touch with you, connect you with our e-newsletter which has all of the information about ways to connect and be in worship and service and small groups and all those wonderful things. And there's also a place on the contact form for prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So we just encourage everybody to use that contact form today so that we can be connected together. Now, when we worship online, we always covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And that means that we're going to covenant to participate. So let's do the things we're doing together in worship today. Turn off other distractions, other devices. This isn't just a random video that you're watching. This is a time of worship together and worship of God. So maybe light a candle to help you focus and then really do whatever it is we're doing. When it's time to pray, go ahead and pray. When it's time to stand up and sing, go ahead and stand up and sing. That's our covenant to participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way we may be joining in the comment section together, the way we may be gathered with some other folks as we're participating in worship, and the way that we're just sending this whole experience out in the world. We want it to be a blessing to absolutely everyone who's participating today. Now, as I mentioned, this is our Celebration of Graduates Sunday. Uh, we're so excited to celebrate with people of all ages, but we're particularly celebrating with our high school graduates of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I invite you now to settle in as we enjoy our parade of graduates. Welcome. <laughs>
Hi, we're the Brinkley family. Please receive this call of worship. Sing and shout with joy. For, For the God, God of possibility is with us now. Give thanks and praise God. For the, the God, God of hope, hope is with us always. Let's worship God now. And, and remember, remember God's, God's miraculous power of unending love. Please join us in singing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Good morning. My name is Marcia Stout, and I'm the keyboard player and a vocalist with the DAUMC Praise Band. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Sustaining and encouraging God, we welcome your spirit today, even as you always continue to welcome us. Thank you for being right by our side. As we worship today, encourage us to turn to you and seek your guidance for our lives. Slow us when we try to rush ahead. Prompt us when we delay and hesitate. Steady us when we stumble. Although we do not always understand this world, remind us that you delight in each of us and will strengthen and support us to grow in faith, radical hospitality, and Christ-like service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let's share the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another and with me and join in celebrating and blessing these wonderful high school graduates. Hi, my name is Calista Brinkley. I will be graduating from Springfield High School and attending UIS in the fall. Something that makes me hopeful for the future is change and meeting new friends. Good morning, everyone. My name is Cutter Gillette. I will be graduating Williamsville High School, class of 2022. My plans after high school is to become a Navy Special Forces diver. And what really makes me hopeful for the future is that I will be successful and that I can bring protection to our country and our many great people. Hello, my name is Leah Philbrick and I will be graduating from Rochester High School on Sunday, May 22nd. I am going to attend Bradley University for pediatric travel nursing. And something that makes me hopeful about the future is the feeling that I'm going to get just by helping someone or saving their life. Please join with me now in a time of special prayer and blessing for our graduates. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this season of celebration as we give thanks for all who are graduating from grade school, high school, and college. We thank you for the blessings of these years of school, their growth and wisdom, friendship, skill, and persistence. We thank you for bringing them through this unique experience of school during a global pandemic with all of its ups and downs, learnings, disappointments, and joyful surprises. We are grateful for all the resources, help, and guidance that you, loving God, have brought up alongside them in their journey to this point in life. 
We ask your blessing to be particularly on our high school graduates, Brandon, Callista, Cutter, Laodie. Help them to look forward to their next steps in their summer plans, in continuing their education at college, in the workforce, and in entering military service. Give them faith and a sense of purpose. Guide them in serving others in effective ways. Help them to always know they will find fulfillment in following you, that you call them to live a life of generous hospitality, that you will always be with them, and that you will bring to completion the good work you have begun in them. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, it is time for small talk. I want to encourage all the children who are with us in worship to come in really close to your device and to your screen so that you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. This time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her fabulous assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in really close right now for small talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and his helper, ah, no, his helper <laughs> Cohen. And we have another helper with us today, Addison. And we have some other friends with us today that we have met on a journey that we just took. Kind of like Paul, as he went <laughs> telling people about Jesus, he went to Macedonia and he ran into Lydia. And we didn't run into Lydia, but we ran into of these other friends and we shared the story of Jesus with them and they loved hearing about it and they loved Laud. They loved hearing the message and wanted to be more like him and part of the message of Jesus. And we have to remember that as we are out and about, even if we don't openly say something about Jesus, although we should, they can tell by how we're acting, their billy goat, right? There's a song that says, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And as Christians, we love everyone. We should love everybody. And that lets people know what we believe. I know, it's hard. And that we are can spread the message about Jesus. So keep that in mind. When you are out and about, maybe on a hike or a trip, show people your belief in Jesus by how you act and share that belief in Jesus. Okay, Mr. Goat? No biting. No biting. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leah Philbrick and I'm in the youth. Our reading from the Bible today is Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this Bible reading. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God was calling us to proclaim the good news to them. We therefore set sail to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer of purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. May the God bless our hearing and our understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. In the seven years before my family moved to Springfield, Illinois, to serve in ministry uh, in this place, I served in Lacey, Washington as the planting pastor of what grew to become the new Evergreen United Methodist Faith Community. Beginning a new church is a whole family affair, and I'm proud of the work that my daughters, Joy and Karis, and my husband, Curtis, that they joined me in to start a brand new faith community. 
It's exciting, gratifying, exhausting, and all-encompassing work at times. It's humbling to be a part of what God is doing in a brand new way in a community, to bring together people to love and follow Jesus and share life together. By far, it's some of the most transformative ministry I've been a part of in my now 25 plus years uh, of ministry in the local church. I know that any of you that have started a new thing, beginning a new social enterprise, a new business, a new ministry, a new thing of any kind, I know that you definitely relate to the joys and exhaustion and exhilaration of it all. In an already established congregation like Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, I love to be on the lookout and get on board with how the Holy Spirit works in that same way. To bubble up new and needed ways of being community. New and needed ways to reach new people with God's love. New and needed opportunities to come up alongside the Holy Spirit to partner for justice, mercy, peace, and transformation. It's exciting. So I was delighted to find that one of the assigned scripture passages for today in our Christian calendar has within it the story of the founding of a new Christian community. Tucked away here in chapter 16 of Acts during the Apostle Paul's second missionary journey, after he has that vision of the man of Macedonia and crosses over from Asia Minor into Greece and before the often recounted story of Paul and Silas's imprisonment in Philippi, which is all very glamorous and dramatic and very Pauline. Tucked up in there is the story of the founding of the Christian community in Philippi and its leader, Lydia. As someone with an eye out for starting new churches, I always try to listen really carefully to these stories. Not so much for insight on strategies for how to do that kind of ministry, because strategy is so contextual to particular situations and places, communities, times, and all those kinds of things. Rather, I find myself listening very carefully for the values expressed in the founding of Christian community. What is it that is deemed important at the founding of this community? Who gets to be a part? What kind of fruit is first born from this new thing? The values expressed in these founding stories are important. The way community is formed, the values expressed, these are the foundation from which the community grows. In church planting parlance, it's talked about as the DNA of the community. And like DNA in living creatures, the DNA of a community set at its beginning continues to guide and shape the life and ministry of that community, whether it's a new church, a new small group, a new worship service, a new mission, or really anything. What are the values expressed in that beginning, in the foundation that are set as the DNA? So let's take a look at what's being set in the DNA of this new Christian community at Philippi. First of all, its leader, Lydia, is a woman. Yes, I know, that's obvious. But that by itself is remarkable. It's remarkable not because women are somehow not gifted or not called by God to spirit-filled leadership, because women definitely are and have been and continue to be. Rather, Lydia's womanness is remarkable because one of our human sinful tendencies is to exclude, not make record of, discount, or disbelieve the stories of people on the margins of society, in particular women in faith leadership. This discounting serves to undergird the broken, exclusive, and destructive power of empire and serves to undergird the approval that might be granted by the power of said empire. For biblical examples, see the unnamed but faithful groups of women who both assisted and worked with and extended Jesus' ministry. Or Mary Magdalene, Mary, Martha, and other women at Jesus' tomb, and the disbelief afforded to all of them across multiple Gospels in their witness to the risen Lord Jesus. Let all with ears listen. So here is Lydia and the story of God's Spirit being poured into her at the founding of the church in Philippi. What do we know about Lydia? Well, we encounter her as Paul is seeking to share the good news of Jesus in the city of Philippi. And when Paul went to a new city, he would generally find the local synagogue and share the good news with the gathered Jewish congregation. That's how we get started. But apparently there was no synagogue in Philippi. 
which probably meant that there were not enough Jews in Philippi to have one, meaning that there were probably not the required quorum of 10 Jewish men to form an assembly of Jews to worship. However, there is a place of prayer, an informal setting, outside the city gates beside a small river. Gathered there for prayer is a group of women, one of whom is Lydia. It's a Greek name for sure, not Jewish. And she is described as a worshiper of God. Generally, this means a Gentile, not a Jewish person, who is following the Jewish faith. We hear Lydia is originally from Thyatira, a city well known for its textile industry, and that she is a dealer in purple cloth, an expensive textile only afforded to the royal and the rich of society. Lydia is also described without permission of or reference to a husband. She is the leader of her home. When she is baptized, then her household is baptized as well. And she invites Paul and his cohort to come and stay at, as she says, my home. Lydia appears to be a self-sufficient, successful businesswoman with a decent income and a nice home. But even so, there is something Lydia needs, a spiritual need that is satisfied by receiving the good news of Jesus. We hear that God opened her heart to listen eagerly to what Paul shares. And she does listen eagerly, and she then responds eagerly, being baptized, having her household baptized, and then open-heartedly offers the hospitality of her home to Paul and his team. She says, if you find me to be a faithful to Jesus, please, please come and stay at my home. And they do. If we read further into Acts chapter 16, we find that Lydia's home is the gathering place for all who are now followers of Jesus in the city of Philippi. Lydia and her home become a haven of worship and community for all whom the Spirit has brought together, regardless of social standing, ethnicity, gender, their past, or their present. What a powerful founding story for this Christian church at Philippi. At the heart of it, it's the hospitality of God's Spirit and the hospitality of Lydia to receive that Spirit and wholeheartedly offer that same hospitality to Paul and company and then to all in Philippi who were seeking to follow Jesus in the way, whatever their race, place, or standing in society. This generous hospitality and egalitarian openness born of God's grace are hallmarks of the Philippian church. We continue to see the fruits of this in the letter that Paul writes to that church later. In the biblical book of Philippians, that letter, we learn that the community has continued to grow, that women continue in significant leadership, that they are faithful to a simple following of Jesus' way that invites in all people, that they are generous in their sharing of their common goods, that they have sent gifts of financial support to Paul as he continued in ministry, and that they were deeply concerned for him when he was imprisoned. Wow! This spiritual gift, this practice of generous hospitality is just so transforming, isn't it? I believe it is foundational to what it means to follow Jesus and be about his life-giving work in the world. Over and over throughout the Bible, and certainly through the transforming life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and the church born of his love and grace, there is a pervasive witness to the transforming power of generous hospitality. So, what do you think that kind of hospitality looks like now? Take a few moments to think about that. And if you'd like, Put a few words in the comment section about what generous hospitality looks like. Now, I am willing to wager that as you reflect on what generous hospitality looks like, there are some things that do not come up as being expressions of generous hospitality. Things like fear of the other, fear mongering, not listening, greed, hatred, racism, misogyny, homophobia, lying, discounting of others and their experiences, 
turning my back on the needs of others, a fear of trying new things. I'm also willing to wager that as you reflect on what generous hospitality looks like, some of these kinds of things may have emerged. Paying attention to the new person in your midst. Finally inviting that neighbor or coworker or whoever out for coffee and over for dinner. Changing the way you use your resources on yourself so you have more to give away. Real deep listening to the people around you, even if you don't agree with their views. Mentoring at-risk children in your local school. Giving the benefit of the doubt to the other. Speaking up and speaking out about racist talk or homophobic talk or misogynistic talk. Working to become anti-racist. Standing between a bully and their intended victim. Helping your church community move toward even more openness to people who are different than you. Helping your church community open up to the folks who are not there. Finding out what hurts and needs in our community, what those are, and then working with the Holy Spirit in the intersection of those needs and your own giftedness. This kind of generous hospitality that we're talking about, it's countercultural. It is countercultural because God's love and saving grace dismantles barriers that keep people apart and that cultivate strife. God's love and saving grace dismantles those things that push us to hate, fear, or to exclude one another and to hate one another in broad, ugly strokes. Now, for our graduates especially today, and anyone that is heading into a time of life transition, I hope that you internalize this message that hospitality of spirit is a foundational way of living as people who love and follow Jesus. As you head into your next life adventure, whether that's to college or the military or to the workforce, or if you're heading to a new job, a new living situation, retirement, know that your church family is praying for you to courageously live out that hospitality in your transitions and next steps of life, to welcome the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, to open your mind, heart, and spirit, to be open to the new experiences that people that, uh, and people that God is placing in your path, to practice hospitality and welcoming the other, to speak up, speak out, and live out God's love, acceptance, and grace, to live a hospitable life in the new and possibly surprising ways God will place before you in this next stage of life. We pray that you will trust God and boldly live into that hospitality. For Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, our family and friends, I believe this spiritual practice of hospitality is one we need to continue to pray for, develop, and grow in our community. Hospitality is certainly a foundational value of our church. You live it out every day in ways small and large, from saying hello to someone new in your midst, uh, to the hospitality needed to hold and grow transforming ministry for people in recovery and children most at risk, and everything in between. But we're not finished yet. God continues to call us here in this community at this time and place. There are still so many people living right around us and beyond who need the connection of church family, the healing offered by a wholehearted, loving community in Jesus' name, and the saving grace that is experienced when we deeply listen to the other and respond in compassion and action to what the Holy Spirit shows us through these relationships. But if we simply say, they know where to find us, or we don't really need to continue reaching out to new people in new ways, or it's just too much work to do a new thing. That doesn't really honor the generous hospitality and world-changing, life-transforming mission Jesus calls us to. So, we are going to continue to cultivate our spiritual gifts of hospitality. We are going to continue to reach out with the most generous, intentional outpouring of welcome and inclusion, however we are gathering and wherever we are doing it as a church community, in person, online, outside, inside, upside down, and inside out. We are going to cultivate hospitality as a spiritual practice wherever we are in our everyday lives, at work, at school, at play, in the grocery store, in gatherings, social, political, and familial. Every day, 
let's ask the Holy Spirit to open us up in generous hospitality to the people and situations around us. And we're going to continue to be open and hospitable to whatever the Holy Spirit is up to next in our life together as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. To respond with a resounding yes, with trust and boldness to that hospitality that speaks God's love and grace across all lines and all barriers. To transform lives and situations into new life, even our lives, even our church, even our community, and even our world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join us in singing, How Great Thou Art. My name is Cindy Arnold, and I am a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I also participate in the Young Adult Sunday School class and the Vital Conversations each month and in the community garden, especially this time of year. Between Sundays, I am a high school math teacher, so welcome to my classroom. Would you pray with me this morning? Hey God, thank you for this day. And for the days of sunshine and rain that we have had so far this spring. Thank you for each other and for the chance to build community with each other in love. Thank you for teaching us that, Jesus, how to build a community based on love. Thank you, God, for the graduates that we celebrate today. My teacher heart overflows each May. And God, I realize you look at us in celebration like that too. 
Thank you for the achievements and successes, for the awards and for the recognition. And God, thank you for those times we barely scraped by because those are successes worth celebrating too. Thank you for teaching us to learn from our mistakes and thank you for your grace each time we falter. Help us show that grace to others and ourselves alike. Lord, guide our graduates in their next steps, next adventures, next challenges, and help us support them as their faith community. Lord, we know that our world is experiencing a whole lot more lately beyond graduation celebrations. Please bring peace to our world where there is violence and turmoil. Bring justice where there is oppression. Bring love where there is hatred, indifference, and hard hearts. God, give us the courage, the strength, the compassion, and the creativity to be the way that your peace and love change this world. From our classrooms to our sanctuaries, from our neighborhoods to our state and federal leaders, all the way to the other countries experiencing violence and war daily. Move and equip us, Lord, and remind us that we are called to act out your world-changing love. Lord, please heal those who are hurting and sick and seeking recovery. Comfort those who mourn and make your love known to us right here, right now. Now, Lord, remind us of how to live out our faith each day as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, your generosity is the key to so much that we are able to accomplish here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And we are so glad that our graduates have been raised up in that spirit of generosity. We always try to make it easy to give, whether you use our online giving portal, available at the QR code on your screen, ACH Bank Transfer, you mail your check to the church or bring it in in person, your donations are always appreciated. In addition, there are ways coming up in which you can give of your time and talents to the programs of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Our United Women in Faith will hold their quarterly meeting on Monday, May 23rd at 5.30 p.m. in the Round Room. A salad bar will be served, and all women of this church and any church are welcome to attend. They hope you will join them. Also on Monday, the DAUMC Mission Committee will continue its vital conversations on race. This is a monthly series of conversations that takes place via the Zoom network. You can call the church office to receive the link. Have you noticed the plants springing up in the DAUMC Community Garden? A Community Garden Workday has been scheduled for Saturday, June 4th from 9 a.m. until noon. Come out and help us grow. And we want to encourage everyone to attend worship, either online or in person, on Sunday, June 5th, as we celebrate Pentecost, the birth of Christ's church on earth. Please wear red to worship that day. Have you made your pledge to support the His Home 300-mile bike riders yet? The ride kicks off on Sunday, June 19th, and it is our way of supporting the His Home Orphanage in Haiti. If you have questions or would like to ride or contribute, please contact Aaron Emery at the email address on your screen. Items are pouring in for this year's DAUMC garage sale. Now we need volunteers to help sort, clean, and categorize those items to make sure they're ready for the sale on July 15th and 16th. 
Pretty soon you'll be able to see social media posts promoting the garage sale. Please share those with your family and friends. And the dates for this year's edition of our Vacation Bible School have been set for August 8th, 9th, and 10th. Be watching for more information on this important event in the weeks to come. My, there are a lot of ways to grow your faith at Douglas Avenue. The best way to keep up with everything is to make sure you're signed up for our e-newsletter and our printed mail newsletter. You can do that by scanning the QR code on your screen and filling out our online contact form. It's the best way to stay in the know. You can also provide prayer requests on that form and they'll go directly to our pastor and prayer team. Thank you again for all the ways you demonstrate generosity as we seek to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. But now, it's time to return to worship. Please join us in singing one of our graduates' favorite songs, My Life.
thank you for joining in worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for this special celebration. It's been such a joy to have this time with you, and I pray that the whole experience has been meaningful and uplifting, that it has touched your heart, that you will continue to worship with us online or join with Douglas Avenue for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8 15 and 10 30. Please do remember to use that contact form because there's so many opportunities to connect and to serve to love and to grow in your faith with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. When you use that contact form we can get that information to you and please also remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. We love to pray with you, so please use that contact form today. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that the God who loves you is calling you in hospitality and that Jesus Christ is opening that way before you with his love and his grace and that the Holy Spirit is going to strengthen you, encourage you, and give you boldness to live out that hospitality in your life each and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.